Okay, in this vodcast, we're going to talk about the seven steps of graph making. This is important, and the reason is, is because if you know how to read a graph, you can take and pass almost any standardized test, because a lot of it has to do with graphing. And if you can understand the story that a graph is trying to tell, then you're ahead of the game. Okay, so if you know how to make the graphs, then you'll know how to read the graphs. But anyway, here we go. All right, the seven steps of graphing. And the example that we're going to use here is the example from the worksheet that you just did, which was, I believe, the worksheet uh, graphing activator, I believe it was. And you can see the data is up here, okay? And you can see we're going to graph uh, distance or how far away something is, okay, as it goes with time, all right? So let's, let's go ahead and do this. The first step. Okay, it's actually pretty obvious. Um, it's to draw the axes. Okay, that's the first step. And all you got to do is just draw uh, up and down, lefty, righty, upy, downy, lefty, righty, as some say, or really X and Y. All right, that's your start. Next up, what you want to do is you want to label the axes. Okay, now more times than not, in fact, I would even venture to say almost every time you are going to want to put time down on the bottom or x-axis because that tells a story. We normally read things left to right and so we're going to look at things from left to right as time goes on. Okay, So time is almost always on the bottom, pretty much all the time. Right? And then on the other one, okay, this is where you're going to want to put the other thing. Okay, And in this case, it's going to be distance, if I can write correctly like that, eh, that's good enough, okay? So, basically what I have now is I have time and distance, okay? In other words, I'm graphing the distance as it relates to time, all right? Okay. Next up, you got to make your scales. Now, here's the key, is you have to make the scales, you have to make the numbers evenly spaced, okay? You don't want to evenly space the data. Because if you evenly space the data, every single time you're going to get something that looks like this. Every single time. And it may not actually be that way. So what you want to do is space the numbers. Okay. Now let me show you what I mean. Okay. For example, for time, we're going from 0 to 10. All right, that's actually pretty easy enough. Let's go ahead and let's just make 0 down here. We'll make 10 all the way over here. Okay. Five will go right in the middle. Okay? That's really not that hard to do. And of course, you can always use a ruler, or if you're using Excel, uh, you'll have an even better advantage. Ooh, that's not so bad. All right, so six, seven, eight, nine. Let's see if we can still keep them evenly spaced. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four. All right, that's not too bad. All right? And then for distance, okay, now for distance, same thing, except you're looking at it going from 0 to 9, okay? So you take your minimum and your maximum, and you make the minimum, let's see if I can do this over here, your minimum, okay, should be down at the bottom or toward the bottom, okay? And your maximum should be up at the top, okay? And that would be 9. I kind of like 9 because I can easily chop this up into 3s. Okay, and I've got, there's three, and there's six, and I can chop that up into threes, but I won't label it because I think it'll make the whole thing here a little uh, hard to read, okay? But okay, all right, that's, that's not too bad. Notice, I labeled, uh, I'm sorry, I made the scale numbers evenly spaced, okay? In fact, the only thing I got from this data is the smallest and the biggest number. That's it. I haven't looked at any of the data other than the smallest and biggest number. Okay? All right. But I'm missing something. I'm missing something that's going to lose me points. I'm missing my units. And for time, I'm measuring it in seconds. Otherwise, I don't know what one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't know what those mean. Could be hours, could be days, could be monkeys. I don't know. But that's time in seconds. And distance should be in meters. And we know that just based on this little section up here. Okay? All right. 
So now we just got to plot our points. It's actually that simple, okay? Here you have zero time, zero distance. Okay, so at time zero, we have it going zero distance. After one second goes by, so you watch your watch and you go one one thousand. Oh, this thing didn't move. It's still at distance zero. So the time is one and the distance is up zero. So there's our second point. Okay. After two seconds, it is one meter away. So I go two seconds, one meter. And right there is my point. Then after, let's see, three seconds. Okay, we can actually probably check these off. We put that in, we put that in, we put that in. All right, let's do three seconds and two meters. All right, so let's go over three seconds and up to two meters. So this is saying that at time equals three seconds. So three seconds into the, into the situation, it was two meters away. Okay, all right. Now, I'm gonna sort of keep going here quickly. Four, three, five, and six, six and seven, yeah, no, six and five, sorry, <laughs> seven and six, eight and seven, nine and eight, and ten and nine, okay? We put all of those in, okay? All right, so we have our plots pointed. Now, here's an extra step here, and we connect the dots. You guys are probably used to this one, okay? Um, oops. There may be times when you want to do a line of best fit. Uh, in this case, is not, sorry, that should have been connected better, but it just wasn't. Uh, but anyway, you want to connect the dots so you can see what it looks like, okay? But we're still missing one last Thing here. This is step number seven. It's super, super important. See, I know that this is a distance versus time graph, but um, we need a title. Okay? And so this might be the motion of, um, I don't know, uh, let's say, I don't know what it is. I think I said it was a person. Okay. So we'll say that this is the motion of, I, don't know, I think it might have actually been me. So motion of Mr. Webb over 10 seconds, okay? And there is my title, okay? This is a good graph. Why? Because it's got a title, because it's got units and labels on the axes. If you don't have that, I don't know what it's about. It is very specific. This is not overkill either. You gotta have your units on the side and you gotta have good data. So every time you do a graph, this is what you wanna do. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in class. Um, I will see you later.